Hey guys, Smart Packer Sarah here, and I'm back for the March edition of our Ask the Vet video series here with our staff veterinarian and medical director, Dr. Lydia Gray. Hey there. And I want to thank you all for participating. Questions were submitted by fans oh like you, gosh. voted on by fans like you, and we selected the top five, and we're really excited to go through those questions now. If you guys want to stay up to date with the latest on our Ask the Vet video series, make sure you check out blog.smartpackequine.com so that you can stay in the loop. How do you remember that? I remember uh, all of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you ready to get started? Oh, man, yes. Okay, let's jump in with question one. This was submitted by Mer uh, Mercy to our customer care at smartpack.com email address. Okay. So she emailed our customer care team. Okay. And she is looking for some mercy uh, against thrush. She says... Oh. How can you prevent thrush in the spring when your horse is outside 24-7, when there's mud and melting snow? What do you think? Well, it doesn't matter what I think because this one, I cheated. It always matters. And we have a hoof health care consultant at SmartPak, Danvers Child, certified journeyman farrier. It's quite good. When I saw this was leading the charge of the questions, I said, hey, Danvers, you want to answer it? And he did. Can, so can I just read that so I don't I wish you would. Way? So he says, horses were pretty much designed to be out 24-7. So in some ways, that's an advantage, since the horse is not confined, which can lead to insufficient activity and reduced stimulation. So while being turned out will potentially create more exposure to moisture and ick, see, he says, it says ick. That's very technical term. <laughs> the activity will typically offset those issues by aiding in normal hoof cleaning and increased stimulation. So, all good. Uh, beyond that, I always reference Dr. Stephen O'Grady, who says that proper, regular, and professional hoof trimming is the best way to avoid and or treat thrush. We generally talk about trimming in relation to biomechanics, so that is a scientific word, uh, but Dr. O'Grady is going back to the more basic issue of talking about overall hoof health and how maintaining proper load distribution is vital, especially in relation to the caudal or the rear, the heel aspect sure. of the foot. So the activity promotes good cleanout of organic ick, stimulates hoof health by promoting good vascularity circulation and regular maintenance trimming allows the hoof to capitalize on that activity and function optimally. Uh, there's NB, I don't know what that means. Maintenance may need to be increased so a, on a shortened cycle in the spring, which is often a period of rapid hoof growth. Okay. So did that make sense? It made sense. Yeah. Uh, the word that I think he uses in a different way than most horse runners are used to is stimulation. When I think okay. about stimulation, I think about mental stimulation, being oh, engaged. And yeah, right. I don't think that's quite what he means, although horses can get bored in their stalls. They can, they can. What do you, what do you think he's talking about I with stimulation? I think the Danvers means um, mechanical moving circulation, vascularity, stimulating the, the um, blood vessels and blood flow. That's, that's what he means. movement is critical to hoof health. Correct. And yeah. so this horse being turned out, that's a great advantage. Yeah, him. yeah, so he really liked that part. So I think he's impressed. <laughs> okay, Yeah. I like it. Great job, Mercy. Yeah. All right, question two. We have Kelly who commented on our Ask the Vet video on YouTube. And Kelly's asking if you could go over anemia in horses and some treatment options and how riders can help prevent anemia. I think it might be most helpful to start with what is anemia? Yeah, based on what you asked me before, I was gonna say, maybe we should just define anemia. So anemia is a decrease in the number of red blood cells. Yep. Okay, next layer on top of that is iron, low iron or iron deficiency is not a common cause of anemia in horses. Okay. as a species. Horses have this really elegant system of um, recycling their iron via their spleen when red blood cells get damaged, lost, or destroyed. Mm. Not lost, but destroyed. So that's good. How would iron deficiency cause anemia? Is iron used to make red blood cells? Iron is a key mineral, it's a mineral, yep. right, in the hemoglobin molecule that's inside red blood cells. And that's yep. what allows red blood cells to carry oxygen. Okay. So we breathe it and it in our lungs, they get the blood gets oxygenated and then the red blood cells carry it around and give it to our tissues. Okay. And it's iron being a part of hemoglobin that allows that. But the only way that horses need more iron is if they actually lose blood. Okay. Now you can lose blood acute or chronic. 
I always get back to the, the science. Um, acute would be like a wound or an injury. Sure. Okay. Uh, chronic would be something that maybe you wouldn't notice. It'd be uh, gastric ulcers, so you mm. wouldn't see those. Uh, parasites. So like a slow leaking of blood over a long time. Chronic. So the important thing when I think of anemia is you have got to figure out the root cause. Okay. Clearly, if it's acute blood loss, you have to stop that. If it's chronic blood loss, and your veterinarian can help you determine what the underlying cause is, and you address that. In the meantime, you can supplement with a product that is appropriate for the kind of anemia that your horse has. So if there's blood loss, certainly something with iron would be good. But if there's not, then um, the B vitamins, minerals, micro minerals like copper, cobalt, zinc, those kind of things, uh, specifically vitamin B12. That's what I think of as you needing to be on board when the horse is creating more blood. Okay. So but it really comes down to what is the cause of the anemia. Okay. Interesting, because I think a lot of people think anemia is a pretty common thing in horses. I think it's the thing you hear I get in that low impression energy too. horses. Yeah, and it's not, it's not super common, yeah. and certainly iron deficiency anemia, not at all common. Okay, yeah. great to know. Question three is by Barrett on a YouTube comment. What are some essentials for an equine first aid kit? Cheating again. Um, I did pull one from our inventory. If you will help me go I would through be that, happy too. there's a there's a blog that we did, and and also horse the horse health library has a lot of good articles, and there's one on equine first aid. At the end of that article, there's a, the list that I'm going to use that lists what should be in your first aid kit, and I have a couple first aid kits. So I have one in my trailer. It does not surprise me. Yeah, um, I have one in the barn. Okay. I think I have one in my house. Yeah, they're, they're everywhere. Okay. And they're little, they have different things in them, and they're different sizes. Okay. So this one is sort of a, a medium. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of, it's more than the basics, but it's not the big, the big, the big one. Sure. Um, so let's, I'll start reading. I know the first thing on my list is not in here, and that's okay because this bag has so many pockets. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Look at these pockets, they're everywhere. So you can stay really super organized with your first aid kit, with this, this um, first aid kit that we sell, even if you have to add some things and replace some things. Oh, before I forget, if you or someone else, your friend, uses something from the kit, mm. replace it right away because there's nothing worse than saying, oh, I bought this great first aid kit, I know where it is, and then you go to use it and the very thing that you need is not in there. Right so now. if you use it, replace it. Okay. Um, so the first thing is a, th a thermometer. Mm. And the little gadgets are down in here, and they have really good things like hoof picks and tweezers and bandage scissors, but there's no thermometer. So buy this and then go to Walgreens or CVS, get a, a digital thermometer, drop it in here, done. People thermometer is good oh, enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, digital is fine. Okay. Um, the scissors are right there. They have a lot of antibiotic ointments. They have it for this is nice because they have it for people and for horses. Yeah. They were really thinking ahead there. Yeah. They're like, people do we, get injured. Yeah, when, when <laughs> horses get injured, probably sometimes the people do too. Yeah. yeah. Um, saline I use for cleaning out wounds. There's uh, iodine scrub. Mm -hmm. I think there's something, maybe it's in this pocket. Yeah, this is really cool. This mm. is a sponge yep. that already has iodine in it. So it's very fast. You don't have to go gather a sponge and iodine and water. And try to make it you sterile. Just gotta, yeah. This is yeah, prepackaged. You just peel the top and ready to go. This is great. This pocket also has um, some vet wrap and some elasticon. What does your pocket have? Oh, more vet wrap, yeah. Good colors, too. Yeah, mine's, mine's a hot pink. Oh, nice, yeah. for the mares. Electrolytes, okay, what else? I think that's all we got okay, going good. on over here. More vet wrap, okay. more electrolytes. Um, that's the next thing on my list is vet wrap. Uh, gauze, Can't get enough. Yeah, there's gauze all in the middle here. Um, tape, is there tape in this one? I'm not sure if there's tape. I don't know. I have on my list several different types of tape. Um, the next thing is needles and syringes. And my caution with those, while she's still looking for the tape, with needles and syringes, 
only have them in your kit if you know how to use them. Mm. That advice actually applies to everything. So um, what I don't have on my list is a, a brace for a broken leg. Well, because not a lot of people yeah. know how to properly use it. Yeah. So don't put anything in here that you're going to do more harm than good with. So if you know how to give a shot, fine, have needles and syringes. If you don't, wait for the veterinarian. There is not tape in this kit. Okay. Uh, I think most riders hear tape think duct tape. I'm guessing that's not what you're looking no, for. No, no, right here, duct tape. Duct tape. Duct tape, yeah. Okay. Because everyone, you, you should have it everywhere. But I also have white bandage tape. Medical uh, tape. Medical tape, sure. first aid tape, yeah. Okay. Have lots of tape. Tape is always good. Um, the hoof pick was here, I yep. saw it. Gloves, I, I saw gloves somewhere yep. back there. Um, they have a flashlight in here. They do. Check the battery. Um, they don't have in here pens or markers, but yeah, thank you. You're <laughs> pens, welcome. Pens or markers, but uh, that's easy to add. I sure. would add paper to sure. um, tweezers, I saw. And then I have stethoscope question mark. So mm. I, I know how to use it. And it's a nice thing to put in there. If you want to, great. If not, that's fine too. So okay. um, check these out. We have three or four or five different ones. Yep. Check out the article on the Horse Health Library. But I think that everything you need is on this list in the bag. You're all set. Good place to start. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. You can never have enough vet wrap. You can never have enough duct tape. No. That's what we learned. So today. many uses for it. That's fantastic. Our next question comes from Ryan, who submitted it via YouTube comment as well. And Ryan would love to know more about ulcers in horses and uh, recommendations as far as detection, but also treatment methods, and then long-term maintenance for what Ryan is calling an ulcery horse. I think we've ulcery probably horse. all known yeah. one of those. I use a little bit different language. So he's, he uses the word detection, and I would use diagnosis. Okay. Yeah, and that's something that your veterinarian does. There's only really one way to definitively diagnose gastric ulcers and that is with an endoscope so they stick the the video scope through the nose down into the stomach and they actually visualize them how does it go from the nose to the stomach the nose goes to the lungs for well breathing. you go through the sinus passages and then when it comes to the throat area instead of continuing into the respiratory passages you slip down an opening and go into the esophagus and because the vet has the endoscope with the camera they can see where they're going they can't they, they're driving it oh, a little like yeah, it. yeah it's, it's quite cool it's quite very cool. science -y. yeah horses though don't like it as much so okay. they will be sedated Fair. for that yeah and, yeah and and fasted so it's it's not inexpensive and it's not it is a little bit invasive, so not everyone does it. The next method then is response to treatment. Oh. Okay. And again, there's only one FDA approved medication for ulcers, and that's GastroGuard is the brand name. Omeprazole is the, the chemical name. Mm -hmm. And so you can give that, it's a prescription from your veterinary. You give that, and then after a day or two, you see if your horse is better. And that would be what's called response to treatment. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're kind of, by solving the problem, seeing if it corrects it, then you know... You're on the right if track. If it worked, it probably was the problem to begin with. Yeah, and so if okay. it worked, right. If it worked, you have to keep giving the GastroGuard because at least 14 days, 21 or 28 is more like it, but your veterinarian will tell you based on the severity of the ulcers. Um, but in addition, there are some things that you need to, to do. So okay. you need to sort of look at your whole feeding and management turnout exercise show schedule plan and say, am I creating too much stress for my horse? Do I need to back off a little bit? Do I need to reduce the exercise a little bit while he heals? Am I feeding him correctly? Because remember, horses feed all day long. And in modern horse keeping, we might give them two huge meals like morning and night, and that's just not enough for their system, which is continuously producing acid in the stomach. Oh, yeah. So they need to swallow. The saliva is uh, basic and it buffers the acid. They need food, forage to, to also in that. Um, hay all the time, small whole hay nets are the, oh, did they say ulcery? Horse. Ulcery horse. Small whole hay nets are the ulcery horse's friend. Okay. Really, really like those. But keeping hay in front of a horse all the time is, is really the number one thing you can do. Um, so with horses constantly producing stomach acid, that's not like people. Not quite. Yeah. There, it's one of the, the differences between horses and humans. And so yeah. that's why horses tend to be more ulcer prone when we feed them on a human sort of schedule. When it's convenient for us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the acid, their stomachs are made in two parts and the, the acid that's accumulating 
sloshes around to parts that it shouldn't when there's not enough food coming through and using it up and neutralizing the acid. Sure. So. so you talked about when you're treating a horse for ulcers, you can evaluate the situation and look for areas of stress. Mm -hmm. Are there ways, if you know your horse is going to be experiencing stress, that you can better help prepare them for that so that you don't end up, if you say, you know, you're going to be at a horse show for a long weekend or right. something, and that's tough on your horse, mm -hmm. is there stuff you can do to prepare in advance? Yeah, so think, well, you know, put some thought into, am I doing the right thing? Do I need to bring a friend along? But also, the same company that makes the GastroGuard makes another FDA-approved product called UlcerGuard. So it's the same medication, omeprazole, but a different, a lower amount. And you can give that as an ulcer preventative, which is nice. There's another thing you can do, so it's a, like a three-pronged approach, which is you can have a supplement that has some proven ingredients in it to maintain stomach health on board all the time and then ramp it up with the ulcer guard for a show and then if your horse does break through and has ulcers again because he's prone um, and you maybe haven't fixed all your your issues then they, there's always the gastro guard left. Okay and when you say a supplement with proven ingredients do you think Smart Gut Ultra which was in the research study at yeah. the clinical university? Yeah that's, that's the one I'm talking the about. Right, the right sort of choice yeah, for I a do. horse Yeah I do because uh, LSU and Dr. Frank Andrews did some research on that and they presented it at AAP, not last year, so not 2015, but 2014. Um, and it was just really tremendous. Lots of significance with, with what they did. I've heard a really positive response from a lot of veterinarians who were Good. impressed by the research Good. and excited to have an option for that ulcery horse yeah. in terms of long-term maintenance and, and supporting a healthy stomach. Yeah, so. just keeping the stomach healthy and happy and just, yeah. A lot of things I think about horses is like, just try to keep them happy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you guys can relate. <laughs> uh, so our last question, okay. last but not least, we have Jessica who also submitted her question via YouTube. And Jessica, you're wondering, what's the best exercise for an overweight horse? She'd like to have something she can do that doesn't take too long, um, but she wants to be able to do it every day. She's at the barn every day, which I think is fantastic. It is good, yeah. And she <laughs> very sweetly says that her horse is a little chubster, and she'd like to have an efficient exercise that they can do um, so that she can make sure oh. he's maintaining or achieving a healthy weight. All right. Well, I looked, again, the Horse Health Library, great articles. If I say so myself, and they're written by you, yeah, and they're written by me, yeah. And then the the Ask the Vet blog is good stuff, and so I that's where I go for information because this is not the first time I've been asked this question, and so I have two blogs. One's called Exercising the Easy Keeper, and the other one's Turnout Time versus Exercise. Let me start with that one because okay. that one actually shocked me a little bit, um, and I answered her buy a lottery ticket. This is her day. <laughs> so there was a study out of uh, Virginia, and what they found is that. Horses turned out, not in dry lots or paddocks, but okay. in pastures, so big, large, rolling pastures. And I know not everyone has that, but it's a start. Horses turned out on pastures had the same fitness as horses that were stalled and exercised. Oh, So okay. they had three groups. They had the just pasture turnout over the winter. No riding. No. Okay. And then they had group number two was stalled and then daily exercise. Okay. And then group three was just stalled. Okay. So clearly group three went down in their fitness and, and other parameters they measured, but groups one and two were the same. Oh. That, I thought that was really interesting. So your horse will sort of take care of himself left to his own devices. When you make his, his environment more like nature intended. Yeah. What we do though is we stall them, and sometimes we stall them with runs, and, and better, we saw them with runs and paddocks, mm -hmm. but it's still a small, flat, contained area. And they really do better when they can walk at their own pace and walk up and down and around and, and run a little bit because somebody was chasing them. So, Or they thought they heard a treat bag. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm guessing maybe her horse would do that. It seems like maybe. The other one, exercising the easy keeper, you, you should read this one because there's, there's too many studies for us to go over today, but um, they did find a key, a key thing was you have to keep exercising. So daily is good. You don't have to go for hours and hours. A lot of these were 30 minutes of walking and trotting. But when they quit exercising, I think it was after nine days, the horses went back to their original level of fitness. So the important thing is daily, short, 
intense if your horse is ready for it, but keep up. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. Okay. You know, I think um, one of the things that I want to give Jessica credit for is I think there are a lot of horses. You say you get these questions a lot because there are a lot of horses out there that are overweight. And yeah. Jessica's doing a great job being conscious of knowing that it's important for her to help her horse lose that weight. Mm -hmm. What are some of the impacts if people don't take that as seriously and think like, oh, fat horses are cute horses and yeah. they're happier? Well, when you're carrying too much weight, it's hard to dissipate heat. Mm -hmm. So they're going to struggle more when it gets hot. In, in the summers or in Florida, California. Um, they also are more prone to laminitis because mm. their hooves aren't increasing in size, but yet they're carrying more, more. pounds in that square sure. inch. Um, and, and you can set yourself up also for some actual conditions, not diseases so much, but like equine metabolic syndrome, which includes insulin resistance. And that's a key factor in exercising. Exercise has been shown to make your insulin, make your body more sensitive to the effects of insulin. Mm -hmm. So your question is a good one because by exercising and by keeping the weight off, you're scientifically helping your horse from the inside and you're seeing the effects on the outside. Right, so it's not just about vanity, say your horse has no. a nice, nice beach body, no. but it's for his long-term yeah. health and wellness and yeah. soundness. Keeping your metabolism working right and your musculoskeletal system and just everything. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, can I say one more thing about this? Yeah. Small whole hay net. Also Would, the good friend of oh, this guy. Yeah. The yeah. easy keeper, the yeah. chumpster, and if he you won't, will. And he won't hit you for it. They actually like having to go get their hay from the bag. Because it's, it's more like grazing. Grazing. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Small whole hay nets for everyone. Yeah, right. I think it's Not me. No. No. We don't need that. We can control <laughs> ourselves. We can convince ourselves of that anyway. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this month's questions. They were fantastic. They were I had a good they time. They were hard, I thought. There were some hard yeah. ones. You did have some help I from did. yourself I, I, I and cheated. from Danvers. I yeah. So that was fantastic. Uh, so we are accepting your questions for April's Ask the Vet video mm -hmm. now. And you can submit those questions on our blog by email to customercare at smartpack.com. You can submit them on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Just use hashtag, hashtag ask the vet video so that we make sure we see your questions and we can get them all collated for the voting for next right. month and then we'll answer the top five again. We'll do it again and I I'll, can't cheat, wait to I'll see cheat again. <laughs> it's, yeah, I think it's within the bounds. Okay. I think it's allowed. Okay. Um, so, of course, if your answer or, or your question gets answered in the video, you'll get a Smart Pack gift card, right. which is pretty sweet. Yep. And so congratulations to everybody whose uh, questions were selected this month, and yeah. you'll be getting your gift cards shortly. And we look forward to receiving all of the fantastic questions, um, which will be accepted until Monday, March 14th. Okay. So you have plenty of time to get those questions in for the April video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss the next Ask yeah. the Vet video or some of our funny videos as well. Mm -hmm. This one, we had some moments. This is, yeah, I would say humorous. Yes. Maybe not funny. Yes, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. And so that's it for us for this time. Thank you guys so much for joining us, for sending your questions, and for being passionate about supporting healthy horses because we are too. We are too. Have a great ride.